Well, first off, um, the mistake that you're making is that you're actually believing that uh, these Rishayim Dror and Manis and, and the likes are actually trying to help people just because they say so. Uh, if they were trying to help people, they would do what Hashem did, which is tell people the truth. That's what helping people is. If somebody's going 100 miles an hour in a one-way street into a wall, you're not going to say, listen, I'm trying to help him, but I don't want to depress him, so I'm not going to tell him there's a wall ahead of him because he's so committed to driving. You tell people the truth and you let people decide like adults. You treat people like adults and not decide for them of what they can and can't do, what they want to do, what they don't want to do. How do you know you, they don't want to do it? What are you in their mind? You don't know. You're not in their mind. But that's what Droll thinks. That's what Manus thinks. That's what all the heretics think. They think that they're in everybody's minds and people simply can't handle the Torah as if Hashem made a mistake. So that's already number one. You're, you're assuming that they're really trying to help people. And that's false simply because... They're not, uh, and uh, they do a lot of different things in, uh, in the open and even more things behind the scenes that I know of uh, firsthand that uh, would make you realize that they're actually even a lot more evil than uh, I even uh, discuss. You know, I discuss things that they do against the Torah, uh, but there's a lot of things that they do behind the scenes that uh, people don't know about, and it's more pertaining to their personal stuff but also shows what kind of characters these people are. So that's one. Two, you cannot give a, uh, a general uh, one-size-fits-all disclosure. By the way, everyone, and everything I'm saying is just for retarded people that can't handle the entire Torah. So, you know, no, you can't. Why? Because you cannot tell people that you're giving them, in essence, a permission to violate the Torah because they're new. There's no such thing. Am Yisrael was brand new to the Torah at Mount Sinai, yet Hashem commanded them to fulfill the entire Torah on day one. And a day, uh, a week later, uh, when they had Shabbat and somebody violated Shabbat, a person by the name of Tzlov Chad says, Hashem killed him. That's it. Yeah, but he only had a Torah for a week. Tough luck. That's the reality. You're obligated to learn the entire Torah. And you cannot give people a, even a, uh, an indication that they're allowed to violate it. On the same context, there is a reality aspect of it that there are certain people that are, and most people perhaps even, are weak. They're not able to handle the entire Torah right away because they're addicted to their desires. So with such people, you tell them, listen, you have to do this. You have to do A, B, C. Now, if you can't do ABC because simply you just can't get your head around it to commit to doing ABC, that doesn't mean that you don't need to do ABC. You need to do all of it. But if you can't do all of it, it doesn't mean you shouldn't do anything. At the very least, do A. At the very least, do B. Do something. It's better than nothing. But it doesn't mean that that's going to replace A, B, and C and D. Because you still have to do all of it, and you'll get punished for it if you don't do all of it. But at the very least, you'll get punished less until you do all of it. So why should you at least do a a and not you know and and, and uh, you know instead of just doing nothing? Because if you do a, it, you'll see that there is a benefit to it, and hopefully that gives you the strength, the spiritual and physical strength that you need to be motivated enough to do b and then c and then so on and so forth. So yes, you deal with certain people certain ways, but that's generally speaking a one-on-one -on -one type of thing and not just deciding openly to the public uh, because some people can handle the whole thing on day one. In reality, everybody can, and, and some people are willing to handle the entire Torah on day one, whereas others are slower motion. But you cannot give the guy that's willing to handle the entire Torah the same advice you give somebody that is going on slower motion. You have to deal with things case by case. And either way, like I said, there is a very, very important disclosure that they would have to make, which is that you will get punished for not following the Torah, even if you're just starting out at 70 years old. Why? That's the 13 Ikarim. That's the 13 principles of faith. Reward and punishment. The problem with that disclosure is that these people do not believe in punishment. Manus Friedman says that Hashem is going to say I'm sorry to everybody that dies for putting us in the exile for 2,000 years. And no one will go to gain. No, no one's going to get punished. So obviously he doesn't believe in punishment. Dol Kasuta says outright, do whatever you want. I promise you nothing's going to happen to you.
Shulchan Aruch should change. So, again, you have to understand, you're not dealing with people that are trying to help Am Yisrael. You're dealing with people that are trying to help their bank accounts. That's it. Their bank accounts, their ego, and that's it. And anyone that does not believe it, Chabod, keep following them, keep listening to them, keep doing whatever you want. We simply provide a warning. We provide a warning for anyone that wants to have their ears open for it. People don't want to listen, that's it, don't listen. There's nothing we can do about it. At the very least, we provided the service that people will know that this is a danger. Unfortunately, not everybody listens. Many people do, but not everybody. There are always going to be these uh, people that bark on us and you know, make us as if we're the bad people because we're warning people from danger. So it's, it's apparently that makes you a bad guy. Uh, so because no one else is warning, so therefore by default, that's a bad thing. You know, it's a, uh, you tell people that there's poison in the water, and like, no, why are you depressing everyone? Let them drink and, you know, and enjoy. Okay, but they're all going to die if they continue drinking. No, no, why do you have to say that? Why do you have to be so negative? It's complete stupidity, uh, but not stupidity because people are not smart. Stupidity by choice because people simply do not want to change their life, and but they still have a you know, a conscience that makes them feel bad about not following what Hashem says. So what do they do? They listen to Manus Friedman, Dol Kasuto, and the likes in order to pacify their conscience. Why? Because they're just like them, just with a beard. Simple. Asherchem Am Yisrael that listen to the Torah and oy laem, oy laem to all of those people that listen to these kufrim. B'Shem Hashem Nasev and Atzliach, we're very excited to offer you the new Bezat Hashem app 3.0. It's a newer, faster app, full of Torah, lots of Kedusha by uh, the Shirim that we do, myself, Rav Ephraim, Rav Chaim, uh, where you'll have uh, also newer features where you're able to use the app uh, while you're using other applications on your phone. You'll be able to share the uh, the lectures directly from the app. You'll be able to donate online and support our cube and our Torah work that we're doing. And the most exciting feature is that you'll be able to actually ask questions directly on the app and get answers from the rabbis directly from the app. This is something unprecedented, and Baruch Hashem will be able to offer it. Thank you again for all of your support. Check it out. Make sure you have the kosher Torah that uh, will re-energize your neshama each and every single day. Call to B'chavat Lachah.